What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Unity multiplayer solution. This is gonna be available in versions 2020 and also 2021. I'm also gonna show you how to install it in version 2021 and also what you need to do in 2020. We're gonna be looking at some of the components such as the network transform, also some of the properties in the network manager, basically how to install it, how to get it going. And I'm gonna be dividing this video because there's gonna be a lot of content that we're gonna be doing for Unity multiplayer. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing today, which is to look at a demo that we're gonna be building into two parts. This is going to be a multiplayer implementation. And a lot of us know that many games today get more engagement whenever we add multiplayer. And for obvious reasons is because we have, you know, we're playing with people that we know, we are engaging with people that we don't know. So multiplayer is a feature that we really aim to have on, on most games today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how these demo works. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and pull up the bill here. And I'm gonna have multiple windows open because we want to test multiplayer. So multiplayer has more sessions. So we're gonna have a window here, window here. I'll just add about four different player sessions so that we can test the functionality. And I'll put this one right over here. So, so the way this is gonna work is this is what we're going to be building, right? So hopefully you get as excited as I am getting by teaching this. And let me show you some of the parts. So this part right here, it's gonna be where we start the server. So we can start either a server, we can start a host, a host meaning that we have a server and a client. And a server is just a server itself, it just can handle that, it won't clear, create an actual client. And a client is just a client itself. So if we look at the left section, you're gonna see that we have a logger. And this logger is so that we know what's happening between the server and the client. If we wanna see some login information, we can do that. And we'll have that on every single one of these windows. And I also can see how many players we have in the game at all times. So what I'm gonna do is the one on the top left is going to be the host. So if I click on the host, you're gonna see that we have one player in the game. We also have a label here that says player zero. I also have little login information here saying the logger has been enabled. We are just connected. Zero means that this is player zero. And then that the host was started. So what I'm gonna do on the right side, I'm gonna start this one with the client. So we now have player one that join us. I can also move player one if I wanted to. Let's just put him right here so it's not on that, you know, next to the player zero. I can also move player zero, put it right here. I didn't have animations because I wanna keep it as simple as I can. So what if we wanted to add another player, right? We can do a start client here. And now we have player two joining, joining us. And what if I wanted to do the same thing here? We wanna do player three, which in, in our case is, you know, it's player four. We're talking about zero index, that's where they are the way that they are, but you know, I can move these here, I can move these here and everything is gonna move. So what if we wanted to do player five with Unity? We can also do that as well. I can jump in and hit play. You're gonna see that as soon as we do that and we hit a start client, all different clients synchronize with Unity, I mean, pretty quickly. It's all obviously running locally, but you can see that player four just connected. We also can look at the hierarchy here. We can see each one of the armatures, which in my case is what I call them. But you can see here, this is, you know, player zero. We can also look at player one, which is right here. And the other cool thing about this implementation that Unity did is you can see everything in real time. And by that, I mean, if you look at the, the objects that are on the inspector right here, you can see that we have each one of these ones with a network object. And I'm gonna walk you through that. Just, just you know, stay with me. So if I look at this one, you can see that this one right here is owned by the server. This is a player object and it's not a local player, it has been spanned. So there's obviously a lot of properties for each one of these. If you look at the last one, this one says that I am the owner. So that means that the last player is the one that we join. So we are fully, you know, with control of that player. So we can see which players we own, which players we don't own, because these are players that, you know, somebody else join with, we shouldn't be able to touch them unless we do some things in Unity, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna be teaching you. So, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at some of the requirements. So the requirements for Unity are going to be Unity 2021.x plus, meaning that any version of 2021, it's going to work with the multiplayer features, or you can also use Unity 2020.3.x. So any version with 2020.3, it's going to work. So once you do that and you create a project, go ahead and go into Windows, then go into Package Manager. I'm gonna click on this little symbol. If you're using Unity 2021, 
make sure that you do it the way that I'm about to show you. If you're using an older version, which is the 2020.3.x, make sure that you click on Get URL. So we're going to be using the app package by name. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste the package, which is com.unity.net.gameobjects. Click on Add. Okay, so it looks like everything installed successfully. If you want to download some of the packages that Unity provides, you can click on Examples. And you can look at the Bootstrap or Client Network Transform. I'm also going to be including a couple of additional helpful repos that I will suggest you look at, which are the ones that I'm being studying with. So let's go ahead and close out of this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be basically adding what's called a network manager. It's going to be the basically the boss, the traffic cup of everything that happens within the network. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create empty. And this is going to be network manager. And you can put it anywhere you want. I'm just going to put it go ahead right here and then click on a component. And we're also going to be searching for network manager. Once you do that, this is going to be, you know, this is there's a lot of stuff in here that I haven't experimented with, but we're going to be covering some of it. Once you do that, it's going to be adding the network manager. We're going to have basically tell the system, the network manager, what's going to be our player. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and draw our player, which is if I look at the player, let me go ahead and show you that really quick here. And we look at the 2D. This is basically from the started assets. I just added an overlay, which is using TextMesh Pro. And that's basically everything that I did on, on this project. I'm also going to be you know, including this in, in GitHub so you guys can download it and test it out. But just bear with me because we're going to be going through some important parts. So once you add the player prefab, click on the plus symbol here. We're also going to be adding the player amateur network. So when you look at the initial demonstration that I show you where we have multiple sessions, the way that it works is when each client was connecting, these, the, there's a network, basically a spanner that is running behind the scenes. I think it's called the spanner manager that basically just, you know, as soon as it sees that network prefabs, it's going to know that for each client, it needs to instantiate this player amateur network. So this could be any type of player that you have. So once you have those two set, the next thing to do is select the transport. You can use your custom transport. I don't see a reason why maybe you're, you're, you know, you need more of a more robust solution. But in my case, this is what I'm teaching. So I'm going to be doing just the unit transport. And then once you do that, you're going to see that it adds this, basically this script. And this script is for communication, right? This is going to communicate by using this specific transform. If you needed a different transport, like I said, you can also Look at the documentation because they also support that. So once you do that, you basically have networking up and running, but we're not going to leave it there. I just want to show you how this works. Let me go ahead and just clear this. Okay, so once you do that, we, we can't really get this going unless we add another component. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my, my player and any component that is going to be using the networking implementation for a unit, you're going to need what's called a network object. So we're going to be clicking on Add Component, and you're going to see that we have multiple components in here. We have Network Rigid Body, which I'm going to be covering in future videos, Network Rigid Body 2D, Network Animator. So if you want to handle and synchronize animations with the networking implementation, Network Manager, which we already cover, Network Object, which we're going to be adding, and also Network Transform. That It's really cool because any object that has this is going to get the transform information synchronized between the server and the client and the host. So pretty powerful. So let's go ahead and start with the network object. Once you do that, basically this object is going to be able to replicate through the network. There's really nothing in here that I had to change to make it work. They do get a specific hash. They also, you don't need to specify the network manager because it automatically handles that for you because it knows that this is the player object that needs to be spanned from the network manager. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to show you how we can spawn the player without actually having to implement anything through code. So if I hit play, nothing happens, right? You're like, well, I coded it all and nothing is actually happening. Well, nothing is happening because we haven't actually told the SDK who the host is, who the server is, and who the client is. So in my case, I want this session to be basically the host. So I'm just going to look at my inspector area. If you look at the network manager, on the very bottom, you have three different buttons, one for the host, one for the server and one for the client that basically resembles what I have on the UI, but this doesn't work because we haven't implemented it on this video, at least for now. So if I click on the start host, you're going to see that as soon as you do that, we're going to have our hosting here 
Obviously, it doesn't have a lot of the things that I showed you in the beginning because we haven't implemented the network overlay, but we have a player and this player is, you know, in fact, using the multiplayer implementation. You can see in here, if I click on it, this is the player armature network clone. It has a network object. We are the owner client ID. Well, this one is actually set to zero. Network object ID also gets an ID. The hash is what I was telling you about that it generates automatically. And then it just gives you different properties. If this object is a spawn, if this is a local player, which it is, if we are the owner of this player, which we are, or if this is owned by the server. So just keep in mind that those these properties are really helpful when it comes to actually implementing this on the SDK because we're gonna be using those quite a bit. So that's everything I need to do to get this going. I'm going to do another video. Make sure that you stay tuned because that next video is going to implement the host, the server, the client. I'm also gonna show you how to implement the, basically the overlay that we saw at the beginning of the video. So if I go back into the scene, we're gonna be populating this overlay based on a variable that we're gonna be creating that is going to be actually a network variable. That network variable is gonna be replicated through all the clients. We're gonna be able to see everybody's, basically everybody's player name. And we're also going to be able to move the player. So stay tuned for that video. Make sure that you watch it because it's gonna teach you a lot more functionality available in the multiplayer implementation with Unity. So that's everything. Thank you very much, guys.